Ever wondered why tiny pieces of paper jump towards a balloon after you rub it on your hair? Or how a rubbed balloon can even attract or repel a paper ship floating on water? Welcome to the fascinating world of electrostatics, the study of electric charges at rest. It's not just science, it's a part of your everyday life. Electrostatic fields arise from stationary electric charges. As the name suggests, electro refers to electric charge and static means the charges are at rest. At the core of electrostatics, we have electric charges, represented here as a positive red and a negative blue charge. The arrows show the electric field lines which originate from positive charges and terminate at negative charges, illustrating the direction of force experienced by a test charge. The electrostatic field is linked to key concepts such as the electric field, force field, and potential difference, all of which describe how charges interact in space. Fundamental laws govern electrostatics, including Gauss's law and Coulomb's law, which help us calculate the strength and distribution of electric fields. Have you ever wondered where electric charges exist in our daily lives? You might think of batteries or electrical devices, but in reality, electric charges are all around us even on objects we use every day. Everything around us, tables, chairs, clothes, pens, and even shopping carts, contains tiny electric charges. These charges are mostly balanced, meaning the number of positive and negative charges cancel out. However, when objects rub against each other, charges can transfer, creating an imbalance. This is how static electricity is. Electric charges on surfaces or within materials can become unbalanced due to three main processes. friction contact with different material and induction, friction. When two materials rub against each other, electrons can transfer between them due to differences in their ability to hold onto electrons. This process is known as triboelectric charging. One object loses electrons and becomes positively charged, while the other gains electrons and becomes negatively charged. Whether the object will be positively or negatively charged, it depends on its position in triboelectric series. Material at the top will be positively charged, whereby the material at the bottom will be negatively charged. Example, a positively charged cat's fur attract polyfoam. Contact with different materials. When a neutral object comes into contact with a charged object, some of the charge can transfer between them. This can result in both objects becoming charged. Example, positively charged rod become neutral after it touch a metallic ball and the ball become positively charged. Induction. It is, charge redistribution without contact. When a charged object is brought near a neutral object, it causes the charges inside the neutral object to shift. Electrons in the neutral object either move closer or farther from the charged object, creating regions of positive and negative charge. However, the overall charge of the neutral object remains unchanged unless it is grounded. For example, a negatively charged rod had changed the charge distribution between two balls. When the balls are separated they become charged. Balloon. So the key principle is, electric charge is always conserved. Charge is never created or destroyed. It is only transferred from one object to another. Have you ever walked across a carpet, reached for a doorknob and, zap, felt a tiny shock? Let's break it down in simple terms. Charge buildup. As you walk on the carpet, your shoes rub against it and electrons transfer between them, leaving you with negative charge. Isolation from ground. Now you're carrying extra charge but you don't feel anything, yet. Since your body isn't directly connected to the ground, the charge stays with you. The shocking moment. Then you reach for a metal doorknob. Metal is a great conductor and your body wants to get rid of the extra charge. In an instant, electrons jump from your body to the doorknob to your hand, balancing the charge. The spark and shock. If the charge buildup is big enough you might even see a tiny spark. And that little zap you feel. That's just a quick rush of electrons moving through your skin. So next time you get a static shock you'll know, it's just your body playing with electricity. Next, have you ever pulled clothes out of the dryer and felt a little zap? That's static electricity at work. As the clothes tumble and rub against each other inside the dryer, friction causes electrons to transfer between the fabric fibers. This creates a buildup of static electricity. Once the drying cycle ends, these charged clothes just sit there isolated inside the dryer. 
Since they're not connected to the ground, the static charge has nowhere to go, so it stays on the clothes. Now you reach in to grab your laundry and, zap, you feel a little shock. Why? Because the moment your hand touches the metal dryer drum or door, the static charge finally finds a way to escape. The sudden movement of electrons between you and the dryer is what causes that tiny jolt. Lightning. Ever wondered how lightning forms? Let's break it down. Inside a storm cloud, strong winds push water droplets and ice around. As they collide, positive and negative charges separate, with positives moving to the top and negatives settling at the bottom. As more charges separate, a huge electric potential difference builds up. Millions of volts ready to discharge. When the voltage gets high enough, it strips electrons from air molecules, creating a conductive path for the lightning. The electric field becomes so strong that it breaks through the air's resistance, unleashing a massive energy discharge. That's the lightning bolt we see. Let's see the application of electrostatic in industry. The first one, electrostatic precipitator. Precipitator operates in an enclosed chamber. Inside the chamber are collection plates that are connected to the grounded outer frame. Positioned around the collection plates are discharge electrodes. The electrodes are negatively charged with high voltages and are insulated from ground. As flue gas flows through the chamber, dust particles and other entrained flue gas components pass through the high energy field and become ionized. This drives negatively charged ions and particles to the collection plates. The particulate matter builds up on the collection plates and forms a layer. Second, electrostatic printer. The printer's laser beams your print onto a metal drum. The drum uses static electricity to attract powdered toner to the drum's cylinder. The drum rolls the toner onto the paper in the form of your print. The toner is melted and pressed onto the paper by heat from a fuser as it passes through its rollers. Your print comes out of the printer. By now, you should be able to define electrostatics, understand electric charge, recognize electrostatic phenomena in daily life, and see how these principles are applied in engineering. From lightning strikes to laser printers, electrostatics is all around us. Keep exploring and see you in the next lesson.